Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to be planting the Savannah Urn from Unique Stone here in the Woodland Garden, right at the entrance to the nursery. So excited about this. I've been planning on doing this and uh, Jerry gave me the green light to go ahead and uh, borrow one of the Savannah urns from the nursery. Uh, I'll explain later. If you are a fellow, a uh, long time viewer of Gardening with Creekside, you understand this little joke about me borrowing things from the nursery. But uh, just to give you a little overview, here we are. Uh, this is what we call the Woodland Garden because it's under these beautiful, mature, mostly oak trees right here at the entrance to the nursery. So obviously here is the gate, the fence that comes through when you arrive to the nursery we have developed this bed uh, within the last uh, six months or so i would say and we're slowly adding to it and just developing it as a beautiful woodland garden what we're going to be doing today is putting in the savannah urn as you can see uh, so andrew and i and then jerry got it installed got it nice and level and it is sitting here uh, between two rhododendrons. So we've got two rhododendrons right here. And then of course, this newest planting that we just put in last week, I believe it was in the pouring down rain. So we're going to plant the Savannah urn with lots of fantastic shade loving perennials. You can see, I believe that uh, we've already got kind of the irrigation run to it a little bit. So all I did was tapped into the drip tubing that we have in the flower bed, put um, an emitter on that, and then we have the tan tubing that then runs up, goes underneath the base, and up through the center hole. Once we get it all planted, we will finish that irrigation, but this will be on a drip system of irrigation. So, what kind of plants are we going to be putting in here? Well. That was a really hard decision, and I am not joking, it really was, because there are so many fantastic shade-loving perennials that we could put in this bed. I mean, we could put, if you wanted to put just a hydrangea, you could put a hydrangea in there. Um, lots of beautiful options, and so I really did have a hard time deciding on what to put in here. Uh, but I think I am happy with my final selections here at uh, Johnny. We have everything set up for what we're going to plant all right so just go with me and it could change but this is what i think we're going to do so here in the back we have a lady in red fern lady in red is not a new plant to me we have had this for years and grown it for years i adore this fern it gets nice and big has beautiful um, nice soft texture to it and you can see right just a gentle breeze and see how it's moving so this will give me some height because it will get like three feet tall and ultimately two feet wide. It is hardy in zones three to eight, and it needs less than four hours of sun. So that will be fantastic. But like I said, we've had this one for years, grown this one for years. It is a what we call non-branded. So you can see it's just in a black pot. So you should be able to find this, hopefully, uh, pretty readily. But it is a lady fern, nice and tall, and it's called lady in red because the stems will have a reddish hue to it. So that is what we're going to put in the back. That's going to be kind of our thriller. Then off to one side, we are going to have kind of a filler spiller, if you will. This is Feather Falls, um, which is a fantastic carex, a variegated sedge recently within i would say like the last year two years have fallen in love with this evergreen quote grass you can see it has a little bit of an upright but also a trailing mounded habit um, it will get a nice size it's going to be about 18 inches tall but it gets really nice and big and wide like it could get up to three feet which in the container it's not going to do that hardy in zones five to nine and the light on this is four to six hours so it can handle a little bit more sun uh, but it will certainly be a great companion to all the other things in here then you got to have a hosta i mean so this is where it was really hard to decide which hosta to use do i do nice and big do i do a blue hosta do i you know what do i do 
finally went with Wrinkle in Time. This is new-ish from our friends at Walters Gardens, um, but you can see it is in bloom right now. It has these beautiful purple flowers on it, and it's a relatively short hosta. It's only going to get nine inches tall, but it will get wide. It can get up to a little bit over two feet wide. Hardy in zones three to nine, and um, again, less than four hours of sun. I really like Wrinkle in Time because look at the leaf texture on this. Small petite leaves, nice wavy um, appearance to them, and beautiful, has that beautiful variegation in there as well. So this will definitely go up towards the front as it is going to be my smallest and my shortest. Then we are going to go with a Euchara. You got to have a Euchara, right? And look at this beautiful color. So this is from Proven Winners. This is Dolce Wildberry. This says sun to shade. In the south, it's hard to put Euchara's in full sun. They just tend to burn. It is hardy in zones of four to nine. So if you're in those cooler climates, you probably can't absolutely put it in full sun, but not here in the south. It will only get to be 10 to 14 inches tall, and that includes the um, flowers and it'll get to be about uh, not quite like a foot and a half wide. So it'll get nice big presence, but the color on that is just absolutely stunning. With the wild berry, it will be a um, semi evergreen for us. So that's gonna go a little bit towards the back um, off to the side. So we have got the Dolce wild berry and then we have got this beautiful Brunnera. This is a queen of hearts. I mean, just gorgeous texture to it. Now, this is a baby plant. We are growing them, um, so it is on the smaller side. Very compatible to a hosta as far as it has those really fun leaves on it. Great silver overlay on top of that green. This is going to be more deer resistant than a hosta because they're actually kind of hairy um, and have like a rough texture to them. We do not have deer pressure where we are. We have deer, they leave our things alone. Um, but the Queen of Hearts, it can be 16 to 18 inches tall, but nice and wide, like, over, like almost three feet wide. When they get established and they get big and happy and they are beautiful and do pure blue flowers in the spring, this is gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. And then it too um, is definitely a shade, shade plant. So those are the uh, plant selections that we're going to put in there. And then what we're going to do is, of course, um, use the planting method as far as the soils. Um, if you have followed me for any length of time and when I've done a container, I read a couple of years ago in, in like a fine gardening, I think it was fine gardening magazine, where they were talking to a horticulturist at one of, I forget what garden it was, but just a, a beautiful botanical garden. And so he said his trick to great containers is that the bottom one third of the container, he puts a high quality compost and then he puts his potting soil, you know, in there, plant some. Um, but when, by putting that bottom third of the container with compost, it helps retain moisture. It gives those plants when the roots hit it a whole nother level of a food source for them. I have had magnificent results doing that. So I do that with all like my big hanging baskets, my window boxes, containers. So that is just the way that I plant and it works fantastic. So I have got land and sea. So we will use the land and sea, both as that bottom one third. And then when we're finished, we will top dress with it as well. Uh, we will use our soil. I'm gonna do a mixture of the black gold. This is that raised bed. Um, and potting mix. So I'm going to mix the black gold with a little bit of the Proven Winners potting soil. This has a little bit more um, bark in it, so it helps give you some great aeration. You absolutely can plant directly in this. I'm just going to try experiment a little bit because I have these are perennials and they like to be where they like to have the moisture, but they also like to be well draining. So we're just gonna kind of come up with a little Creekside blend and mix those two together. And then of course I will use the Biotone Starter Fertilizer for a nice, strong, healthy root system because it is going into a container and it is um, the beginning of July here in North Carolina. So we want to get those roots really well established and so that they just don't miss a beat and keep on going all summer long and uh, for years to come. That is the great thing about doing containers with perennials is that container just gets bigger and better 
every single year. So without further ado, we're going to start getting this planted and then I'm going to give you an update, a little garden tour on how everything is doing in these shade gardens because they are looking fantastic. All right, so we're going to get to planting. So we have got all the soil in here, the compost, the uh, mixture of the Proven Winners and the Black Gold Raised Bed Mix. When I was mixing the Proven Winners and the Raised Gold Bed, Raised, the Black Gold Raised Bed Mix, that was a mouthful, I made sure not to get down underneath there with the um, compost. Also, um, if you have a unique stone planter, they always come with a drain hole, which is fantastic. The drain hole on this one was pretty large. I mean, it was a it was a good size diameter. So just to help prevent a bunch of soil from getting going down in there and getting clogged up, I just grabbed a rock that's here in the woods and just put it on top. Still have lots of room for drainage in it, but it just kind of helps prevent a ton of soil from going down in there. Now, basically what we're going to do is just kind of plant it like I uh, mentioned it to you. And we are going to get the fern in the back. So we'll just do this together. Y'all want to plant together? We'll plant together. All right. Um, when you are putting your containers together, this is a bit of a soapbox of mine. Um, so whether it is for annuals um, or any kind of container, but especially if you're doing perennials or shrubs in a container and you're planting that, please, 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 that's off-centered, make sure that you are only using potting soil. Do not fill the bottom with packing peanuts, water bottles, pine cones, anything like that. Because especially when you are doing perennials and shrubs, your goal is to have them be in there as long as possible and to be as happy and as beautiful as possible, right? Well, your plants can get zero nutrition from plastic bottles. So if you're going to go to all the effort of making a beautiful pot, spend a little bit of extra money and fill that container completely with high quality potting soil. It will make a world of difference. I promise. All right. So we have got the fern in the back. Ignore the irrigation line. We'll take care of that in a minute. Uh, the feather falls grass, we're going to do off to the side on this side because it's going to be bigger and I want it to have more weight on this side as opposed to the other side because we have a tree right here. And so I want more weight on this side of the container. If your roots um, are really encircled with each other, then make sure you go in there and break them up. These are nice and healthy. They're not what I would consider root bound. So I'm just gonna loosen them up just a little bit and get them nice and happy. Pull it up like a ponytail. And then we're gonna plant this one, like I said, kind of off to the side, more in the back area. And you certainly can put things on their side if you need to, to help give them a little bit of um, some structure right there. Now on the other side of Feather Falls, that's where we're going to put the Queen of Hearts because she is going to be um, as large, as big, nice and big as well. So we're going to put her over here and balance out that Feather Falls. Now, like I told you, these are baby plants. We're growing them. So her roots are a little bit more tender. So we're definitely not going to go in there and break her up. Bring it down like that. Also, when you're planting, whether it's in a container or the ground, the landscape, whatever it is, um, make sure that you don't have any air pockets around your roots. You want your roots to be completely um, touching soil because that way they get lots of nutrition and if the roots are exposed to air then they can um, 
not do well, right? So your plant will suffer. Like you'll think, why is it dying? Why is it turning brown? It's because your roots are not, don't have contact with the soil. All right, so next we have the wild berry and the wrinkle in time. So I'm gonna go, so this is, okay, this is let you into my brain how I'm thinking here. In the winter time structure, the fern is going to go completely away, as will the hosta. They will be gone. You're going to have your grass and you're going to have your eucara that stay, and the brunner will be so so. Like it could stay for part of the time, and then if it gets really cold, it could die back and then flush back out. So I'm thinking about my winter structure, but also my color. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. So, hosta is gonna go over here because it's gonna be small. Euchre is gonna go here. There we go. We're gonna make it happen, people. All right, so we're gonna get these into the container, nice and buried down in there. And you think, like you look at this savanna urn and you think, oh my gosh, it's a massive pot. And it is, like it makes a very nice presence. But when you start putting, you know, multiple one gallon perennials in here, you start to lose your, uh, your planting room really quickly. So we're gonna get that in there. Okay, so we, the pot is completely planted, ready to go. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get the rest of the irrigation on here. These are, this is the same uh, drip tubing that we used for the hanging basket. It has emitters about every eight inches on it. And so we're going to get this connected into the irrigation line. So I don't need a ton of this irrigation line, so I can just come in here and clip it. Jerry got most of all of this, I believe from the drip depot uh, just ordered it online so if you're interested in any of this for your garden you can just go to the drip depot online and order whatever it is that you need so next what we do is we have this little uh, coupler that will connect let's see if i can show it to you very carefully here that zooms in um, it's a little coupler so this will connect the two lines together so um, we're going to join everybody up and you just squeeze everybody in there nice and tight and that is your transition because the beige tubing that i have is solid whereas my brown tubing is uh, has the emitters in there i'm going to use my gloves because you want it nice and tight we're actually dealing with another um, irrigation <sighs> problem in another bed. And the coupler is not the right size for the tubing. Like it's too small. And so the tubing keeps shooting off because of the water pressure. And it is highly aggravating because the flower bed cannot get watered. So you want it really, really tight. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and get the brown tubing, connect it as well. Squeeze everybody on there. Everybody's nice and happy. And then we're gonna wind it around. Now, I don't need a ton of this, but I do need enough, right? So we're gonna go around the outside edges 
because all that water will come back in. And then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here for a second because it'll be easier to do once it is cut. All right, so I have a general idea of how long I need it. Cut that. Boom. There we go. Makes that a lot easier. And then we're going to wind it around. And I do have little landscape staples, the stakes, if I need to press this down. Now, you're going to have to put something on the end of this, right? Because water will just shoot out the end of it. So again, from the Drip D Depot, this is called, um, hmm, yeah, Goof Plus. Okay, like a little plug. So that's what we need is a little, a little stopper on the end. It's like a little plug. Put that in there and boom, there you go. All right. There we go. So it's not per se that, because I put the staples in there, so it's not per se that the irrigation was going to fly out, but just go ahead and, and knock it down and kind of hold it in there. That way, um, when I put my last level of compost on there, it all lays down nice and pretty. So going ahead, top dress with land and sea cover up the irrigation and then give it just nice and full because remember with the perennials you want to have as much potting soil compost good natural uh, material in there so those roots can really get happy and grow So we got the savannah urn all planted up. It is watered in. It is happy. It is going, going to be absolutely gorgeous um, and will do fantastic for me for a couple of years. And the thing is, when you're looking at it, you may go, well, there's like some holes in there. Yes, there are, um, but I am planting this for longevity. I want it to be big and beautiful and everybody intermingling in the coming years. Jerry and Andrew joined me again, and so we are... Um, went ahead and laid down some of the drip tube irrigation on that section that we planted uh, last week 10 days ago uh, and because remember when we planted it it was pouring down rain and we're like okay yep we're good and so while I had the fellows here with me I said let's just go ahead and do it because when you're laying down drip tube it makes it so much easier when you have multiple hands because you're kind of wrestling with the irrigation tubing so you can see that it is laying on top of the soil and so Jerry went ahead and is coming right now with some of the great compost blend so we're going to go ahead and just knock this out now because this way the bed will be all complete once we're done today and everybody will be nice and happy so we can get everything nice and covered so we won't have any exposed soil we won't have exposed irrigation lines and it will all get taken care of so 
I'm gonna let them I'm gonna let them do a little of that work and I'm gonna give you an update on how the plants are doing and kind of a little bit of a garden tour again I know I already said this once but this bed is relatively new it is way less than a year old maybe only six or seven months old at the most and yeah everybody is doing great so we have in here um, a great mix of shrubs and perennials uh, we have evergreen shrubs so we have like camellias we have a lot of the camellias are kind of towards the back and a lot of these well they're either japonicas or they're sasanquas so that means that they're going to bloom at different times um, the edge worthy right here is doing really well i mean it's it is very happy right where it is and we do have all of these i think most of these right here are mature oak trees so we have lots of oak trees right here um, and so we do have to have the good irrigation because those trees just absolutely suck up every ounce of water that we put down on here so we've got those we've also got some uh, father gillas so father gilla is a native plant this particular um, variety cultivar is mount airy and so we have two of the mount airy's right here nice really pretty um, white blooms in the spring so you can see this is um, where the bloom was right here that was an old bloom and then in the fall they are gorgeous colors like really nice fall colors got a couple of those dotted through here but we put these two down here on the fence because they'll get some height to them and so that'll give a little bit of structure here on the fence line and then recently we've added in of course lots of the hostas um, the hostas of course the caladiums those will the caladiums will be annuals for us this year um, the black lace elderberry back here in the back we talked about it last time we were in here that it is growing by leaps and bounds so it's really happy here however it's not getting enough sun because it's not black it's green and so that tells me that it's not getting enough sun so i think what i'm going to do is this fall take it from there basically down to where the irrigation box is because i have a nice hole right here um, right here in this area we'll put it there and it'll be a beautiful color contrast because we've got two camellias and then the father gillas so i'm going to put it here in this hole but i am going to wait and do that this fall um, that way it can get its roots nice and established throughout the winter growing season and then back in the back there's kind of the uh, traditional azaleas back here that are doing nicely. They have got new growth on them. You can always tell what the new growth is because they have um, nice and light green. So all of that nice light green foliage, that is all new. So that is doing great. They of course will bloom in the springtime. Those big traditional azalea blooms that we think of here in the South uh rhododendrons we've got three rhododendrons in here they did not bloom this year and that's perfectly fine with me because again they are very healthy very happy and you can see we've got those two flanking the savannah urn right there um, i do have a, a leak in my irrigation so we're gonna have to uh, once i turn it off i will take care of that but there's there was a little pinhole prick in the tubing and you can see that uh if you can i don't know if you can see it like right there so that camellia gets a little bit of a little bit of extra water spritzed on her um, and is doing just fine but we'll take care of that the easiest thing is just to cut it put a coupler in and then that gets rid of that um, that leak for us and then over here of course um, with our ruby slippers oak leaf hydrangeas they are doing magnificent if you remember we were in um, mama's garden last week and we did a garden tour and she has a ruby slippers that's 10 years old and it is massive so if these grow to the same size as hers in 10 years this is going to be a huge mass of oak leaf hydrangeas right here it'll be absolutely fantastic and then on the other side of course these are the traditional annabelle hydrangeas um, i just let them go they just kind of do their own thing and it's fine i trim them back in the winter time but they just kind of fill in even though they flop over it's all right they still look pretty so we're just going to go with those all right so 
I guess I'll hop in here and help the boys get some of this uh, mulch down, fix that irrigation line, and um, I'll meet you back here in just a second. Today's project is complete and I cannot be happier with how everything turned out. We actually got more done than I was hoping for. Uh, so the best case scenario happened and it looks great. So let's just recap right here. And we didn't show you a whole lot or any of us putting down the irrigation simply because um, the camera went dead on the battery. And so there you go. All we did was just wind that irrigation down. Then we've got all of that fresh, beautiful, this is the uh, Creekside blend of compost and pine bark vines. So we have a, a landscape company, like Stowell Manufacturer, that blends this for us. It is 60% aged pine bark. So you can see, right? So you can see the pine bark in there and then 40% compost. We do use it as a mulch. Uh, it is fantastic in beds like this because it adds that organic matter. Um, and then of course it looks really nice. It looks very natural right through here um, in this woodland garden and just makes the plants pop even more. So it just looks like a million bucks and everything's gonna be really happy. Got that new irrigation on the plants that did not have any and of course the savanna urn I just could not be happier with how this turned out um, so if you're if you're new to gardening with Creekside uh, my husband Jerry I always joke and I'm like well honey if something's been hanging around at the nursery whether it's a plant or it's a planter or any kind of thing and it hasn't sold you know within like two seconds I'm like oh honey I really need to have this and add this to the garden and uh, so it's just kind of a running joke between the two of us but this unique stone this savannah urn it is in ancient age so unique stone comes in six different colors this is ancient age when we were unloading it we accidentally chipped the stand because this is a two-piece um, system here and so we accidentally chipped the the bottom of the stand but it's on the back side and really kind of like up underneath the bowl so you can't see it but i didn't want to sell it you know at, obviously at full price and and then nobody just actually even bought it so it worked out just fine that we got to add it to our garden because nobody is ever going to know that it has a little chip in it really like how this turned out and over the next year two years i mean even this year it is going to fill out magnificently well i think it is just going to be a beautiful statement piece and adding a container to your garden whether it's a sun garden a shade garden it doesn't matter um, but when you add that container into the landscape it just elevates right so we could have easily planted those plants into the landscape but when you're putting it into a container and you incorporate that container into your landscape it just brings a whole different dimension height texture you've got hardscape if you will um, in there and it just looks fantastic so could not be happier again with how everything turned out. Got that fresh mulch. We didn't do the whole entire bed. Um, we just came through and of course covered up where we had some raw soil showing and covered up irrigation lines, but everything just looks so nice. Those lemon blush caladiums. Oh my goodness. Do they not look fantastic against this dark mulch? So lemon blush is a shade caladium and it's just absolutely beautiful through here so today's project is complete and can we say how grateful we are that this is a shade garden because <laughs> it is warm and i don't know if you've noticed the haze it's very very hazy today and that is still um, i think we have i think we're in a red red alert with the air quality again and that's from the wildfires in canada so it's typically not hazy like this but that is um, from those fires that have finding their way down here, um, all the way down to North Carolina. So that's the deal on that. But as always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a fantastic day. Get you a container and plant it with some perennials. You'll be very, very happy you did. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. Come on, out. All right, so. Yeah. It didn't feel like it went down all the way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right.
Perfect. All right, that's all I need, y'all.